there is not a lot of mystery, not a lot of uncertainty, and probably no reason to worry about the Ohio State defense. But that doesn't mean there isn't still plenty to talk about with Jim Knowles. And the Ohio State defensive coordinator has met with the media for the first time in training camp. So that means we've got some Tuesday takeaways or takeaways on Tuesday because he didn't actually talk. I don't know. He talked on Friday. It was a couple days ago, but we haven't done it yet. <laughs> this is a podcast daily. That's Bill Landis. I'm Austin Ward. We're going to get into it. You will hear from Jim Knowles. If you missed that press conference, we're going to try this again. We've got some of the clips and we'll let him use his own voice to talk about what's going on with the Buckeyes. But I, I thought, you know, hearing from him for the first time and everything that's going on, Bill, it's always interesting, but it's maybe more interesting than ever when you're talking about, hey, something historic could be in the works here. Yeah, I, I think the the most important thing, we're, we're going to dig through some stuff and, and, and talk about it, but but I, I think to preface that conversation, the most important thing is, is kind of what you said at the top. There's not a whole lot to worry about with this defense. And Jim Knowles was asked specifically, you know, like, hey, how do you feel about how things are going? He's like, I feel pretty good. And I think if he did not feel good, he would not have said that, right? I, I think he's, <laughs> he's, a, he's a straight shooter, I think. Um, so that's great. I, I think the defense is in a tremendous position. They're obviously going to be very good this year. The, the floor, I think, could not be any higher than it is with this defense. I, I think what's interesting and what we'll talk about a little bit is the ceiling and perhaps different ways to get there or you know ways there to not get there, I guess, or, or things are not going to embrace necessarily this season. Um, that are just like interesting discussion. And I think, you know, there's some dynamics of play that are worth talking about, but I, I guess I don't want any of what we talk about on this episode to come off as us thinking like, Phew, this defense has some holes in it because they don't. <laughs> the defense yeah. is really good. It's going to be, I, I think, the best defense in the country this year. So um, there's no cause uh, or reason for for panic or, or worry there. Um, there's just uh, some, some things at play that we think are worthy of discussion beyond that. Yeah, I, I think it's the intrigue for that. Like, mm -hmm. They could be the best defense in the country and do it 20 different ways, mm -hmm. which is wild to think about. I, there's been you know, some early feedback that when you know, we've talked about safety depth or CJ Hicks playing time with Sonny Styles or the Jack position, things, all things that we may get into in this episode of the podcast daily, that it's like, it sounds like you're concerned or you that I, or that I think that they're doing something wrong. And I, I don't mean that. I just don't know exactly what the right path is. And I think that's, or which of the 20 paths they're going to take. That's the entry. I, I'd like to find out. I don't, I think they could do any number of things and be like an unstoppable force. Yeah. That's like, that's fine. I, I'm not bringing up any of those specific things to cause panic or to suggest that I know better than Jim Knowles because I definitely do not. No, it's not even. These are things that I think Jim Knowles has in his head too. I think I think we could tell from some of his answers that to the questions he was getting asked about some of the personnel stuff on on Friday that clearly he's thinking about it and he's just trying to figure out what's best for the team, right? Like I and. That is the charge of any coach is to take the personnel that you have and figure out the best way to deploy it. And it's not like I, I don't I don't think that um, Jim Knowles is necessarily like wrong with how he's going to do it. You just look at the roster and you think of some of the possibilities. And and, and I, I think at times you wonder, you know, there's a lot to get into potentially. And are you just like squeezing every ounce of potential out of it? Are you truly maximizing what this defense could be? Um, to go from like a very, very good defense to perhaps one of the best we've seen at Ohio State, right? Like, I think that's the conversation. Ryan Day talked in the offseason about, well, I forget the exact words he used, like finding finding the extra yard or extra inch or whatever it was. Um, yeah. That's kind of what we're talking about with the defense. I think the defense is starting off from from a somewhat significantly different point than the offense is because the defense was, was one of the best in the country last year. We're always trying to get better. Um, and, and I think there's are ways for Ohio State's defense to get even better than it was last year. And and that's kind of what the line of questioning I was when we were asking Jim Knowles about some of the personnel decisions, what they might do, what they might not do, given what all they have on hand. It's just it's just interesting to talk about. It does, it's not really an indictment of, of much of anything, in my opinion. It's just like kind of fun to wonder out loud about the possibilities. Yeah, and Jim Knowles has a lot of them, and he would like to use them. 
Multiple, yes. Um, a lot of that happens with disguise, but more calls out of the base look, I would say, you know, more attack defenses out, out of the base look. And, uh, yeah, it's a constant adjustment. It's a constant adjustment and always learning, always studying because you're at year one aggressive, gave up some big plays year two. Um, you know, we were, we were top five you know, in explosive plays, uh, not giving them up, but not as good in sacks and lost yardage plays. So it's just a, it's a, it's a constant, constant balance and tinkering with it. That answer was fascinating to me, Bill, because it, it almost sounds like a contradiction. He wants to be multiple, but he wants it to be out of the base formation. And I can, un I under know, I understand exactly what he means. But a lot of our conversation about like using the personnel, using someone like CJ Hicks or Arvel Reese uh, is like, well, that may require a different formation and a, the base formation is not going to change. Yeah, I think it would require a different formation. Um, it, it was, I think it was a little uh, disheartening for people to hear that. And, and again, not because I think Ohio State is going to be bad on defense, just because I think there are Ohio State fans who look at guys like CJ Hicks and Arvel Reese and think or and, and Mitchell Melton, who's probably more of a defensive end anyway at this point, um, and think to themselves like, man, it'd be really fun to get those guys on the field. And it seems like you'd be, be pretty pretty creative in doing so. But Jim Knowles is like trying to walk a line of uh, deploying the defense, you know, in, in accordance with how this roster was put together, which was to be a four down four four three roster originally, uh, more of a four two five now, obviously, but four down linemen nonetheless. Um, and like he did at Oklahoma State, it's not like four down as a foreign world for, for Jim Knowles, and he's done it more or less almost all the time the last two years at Ohio State. But um, it was a little bit of a bummer, if I'm not if I'm being honest, to hear him say like, oh, yeah, we want to be multiple, but not so much in our personnel packages, just in how we do things out of the personnel packages you all are used to. Yeah, and I promise we're going to get into more of that because it does go – full circle over to the jack position as it always does in any jim Knowles conversation i did bring that up on friday we'll we'll get to that in a minute but tucked into that was the suggestion and we've we've uh analyzed from the outside like okay jim Knowles was really aggressive in year one he seemed to really pull back on that in year two what's the balance of that and we've noticed whether that was student appreciation day uh back uh, in late march or what you talked about seeing, I think, on Sunday in the team periods where it's like Jim Knowles wants to blitz a lot more. He mm -hmm. he seems he seems pretty dead set that that's got to be part of the arsenal here. That that was not like everything it seemed like he was getting at. But the multiple part, if you're coming out of the base formation, you're changing the looks. You and I were at, I think, his first chalk talk and he just showed like 15 different coverages and blitzes out of one formation. Yeah. Like, well, This is wild. I didn't. Maybe that hasn't happened or didn't happen last year as much as he may have wanted. Yeah, I, I think they were they were pretty straight up last year, um, which is not – it was weird. It was almost like year <laughs> – Jim Knowles came to Ohio State and was like, here we go. <laughs> we're, putting, we're putting pedal down. <laughs> we're, going, <laughs> we're going full throttle with this thing, and we're going to blitz uh, even when it maybe doesn't make sense to do so. Um, in hindsight, maybe year two should have been year one. And like You gradually build up to that, not – go full bore and then and then pull back <laughs> um regardless it, it, it ended up with them being a, a good defense last year but they went about their their business in a drastically different way than they did the year prior and, and a drastically different way i think to what jim Knowles is accustomed to or would like to do I, again it was it was it was better i think it was a right like recalibration you probably could have been more aggressive with that group last year because it was the second group second year in the system there were it was a fairly veteran group. It's an incredibly veteran group this year. Um, but but even even last year, there was a lot of experience there where I think you could be reasonably confident they could handle putting more on their plate. Um, it just didn't really happen happen that way. But um, this does feel to me like the natural progression, right? Even even if those first two steps kind of happened out of order logically, <laughs> the third step is combining the two, which is which is what this year I think is is going to be and should be when you have all the talent on hand. And all the experience on hand that this should be an opportunity for jim knowles to kind of 
unleash the playbook on people. I think in a way that um, he probably couldn't do a near one because he was new and didn't do a near two because he was a little hesitant by being burned on big plays uh, the year prior. Yeah, and I, I don't know how much of that correlates directly into the turnover total, which has been a big topic of conversation. Again, Ohio State was really, really good last year in every category, but Jim will say, well, they're not they were not top five in takeaways. Eleven and thirteen games is not uh certainly what he's hoping to do. Um, but he does want to get that fixed. Things that we tracked this spring and we'll track in fall camp are um the presentation, you know, uh, our blitzes, our blitz execution, and then our turnovers. So, what, you know, it's the only way I know how to do it is what you what you emphasize you'll get. So, you know, we've just created that in practice, not just the turnover, but, you know, do we see you actually, you know, even if you don't get it out, going through the punch? going through you know pulling the ball out do do we see you because you're not you never hit the quarterback but do we see you like just matching the hand of the quarterback all those things that create the turnover so you come up with an elaborate point system and and you know you start giving guys points for at least taking a sw swing here or doing this thing you know the things that you think will create turnovers and you just start uh evaluating and grading them on that but it's definitely a point of emphasis because we were not uh, top five, even top 10 in that. And, and we need to be. I saw this happen at the end of a play, just out of the corner of my eye. It was on a, field. I saw it too. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't write down who it was. I, I was like, well, that I just thought that's odd because the play was over as a running back. That's like 60 yards down the field. No one's around him. Like it's done. And I don't know who, again, I don't know who it was. I didn't write it down. I was like, I just, it was quarter mine. And then I looked back over here and I'm like, huh. But just ran out for no reason to punch the football 60 yards down the field when the play was over. And then Jim Knowles said that on Friday. I was like, oh, well, that's what he's supposed to do right now, even if it's seems strange. I'll, I know who it was. I will give you All one right. guess. Okay. I'll give you, I'll give you one guess. Jermaine Matthews. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely Jermaine Matthews. I thought the same thing. And then I was like, oh, that was like, that was kind of a jerk move by Jermaine. To do that. <laughs> and then the next day I was like, oh, okay. They're coached to do it, which I think is great. It's, it's instilling habits, right? It's not, they need to be more um, disruptive. I think in, in terms of takeaways, um, havoc plays, tackles for lost sacks, all, all those kind of things. There's no reason why this defense with this collection of talent, it should should be anything worse than like top ten in, in some of those categories. I know like turnover sometimes is luck, but you can you can get your way to tackles for loss and 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 sacks. And there are schematic ways to do that, and you can ratchet up the aggression. But I also think it's a mindset, and um, it seems like they are trying to hammer home that mindset in this camp, which I, I think will benefit them long term. Yeah, I've tried to figure out like, is it a problem? Is it not a problem? And I think I like you can't argue against having more turnovers is better than having fewer turnovers or takeaways in this case mm -hmm. for the defense like you obviously want more but I, I thought like well there were at least three drops by josh proctor um yeah. love josh proctor he was in the right place in the right time couldn't quite finish these plays that was not new for his career but he's not the only one he's just the first one that came to mind there were other opportunities where they could have made interceptions they didn't finish the play most times it didn't hurt him we can talk about the one play in the big house where if a head is turned a different direction or the officials make the correct call on the replay, which I strongly believe that they botched at the end of that play, um, that number gets at least one higher. I think you could pick and choose, and this is not meant to silver lining it and say, well, they're actually fine. Like, Don't worry about it. Uh, maybe next time the, the ball will bounce the, the correct way from them. Ohio State is trying to change this on their own, which I, I think is what they have to do that's encouraging that's good coaching the players have bought into that denzel burke i know for sure has been putting in extra time with the jugs because he doesn't want to put those uh, those balls that are in his hands on the ground like all that's good they're trying to maximize that but like i don't if they don't get them and if they finish with 11 through 13 or 14 through 16 i, I i'm not sure that that's going to be like 
a true way to evaluate or be the difference maker for this team because they're good enough to do it without it. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And there's also danger in, in chasing them too, right? Like we even we saw a play at the end of the practice the other day where it looked like Jalen McClain might have had an opportunity to just kind of play the receiver or try to knock the ball away. And it seemed like he tried to go for the, the flashy play, play, which was the interception. And Bryson Rogers ended up scoring a touchdown and dunking the ball through the goalpost, right? So, so you, you don't want to encounter those situations too often either. There's there, there's always a balance there. I, and and again, there's I think there is a bit of luck involved. Um so that's why like the INTs and the fumbles are less of a thing for me and, and the sacks and the TFLs are, are, are more of a tangible way I think the defense could actually improve. But I think that's more of a schematic question than it is a, a mindset thing than it is. It's certainly more of a schematic thing that is like a luck thing. Like that is that is you putting a def- or putting an offense on its heels and like getting after them in a way that I, that I don't think this defense did all that often last year. They just kind of played it straight up and were really good on third down and really good in the red zone and kind of got off the field. But there were times where it felt like teams had the ball for a long time because they, Ohio state wasn't necessarily playing defense or playing offense on defense, which is what like one of Jim Knowles mantras. And I, I think he would like to get back to that this year, but I think there are some fair questions about their ability to do that. If Jim Knowles is going to be somewhat hamstrung by having to try to do that within this four down framework that, you know, he seems intent on, on keeping Ohio State's defense in. I want to be clear. I don't want to be uh, the person who's saying, you know what? It's not not important for a defense to get takeaways. Like, I do think it is, but I don't think that it's the only way that it's going to matter for Ohio State. And he, Jim Knowles was responding specifically to a question about that number. And he's had, I, it feels like to me, Bill, like different answers to that throughout his career, like, mm-hmm. or at least at Ohio State, where he, I think he was asked about in the middle of last season as well. And he was like, well, I was a defensive coordinator at Duke. And one game we had like six picks and we gave up 55 points, whatever (laughs) game that was. It's like he he doesn't he's not going to view that as the sole barometer of success. But he does, as he said, he's going to emphasize it and he would like there to be more. But I don't I still didn't get the sense that he was like completely wrapped up in this idea that they have to have an interception in every game or they must force more fumbles they're going to try they're not going to not not try to do it but it's i I think he's when he looks at all those statistics that's probably not the first one that he's scanning for no i i don't think so but you start running through the list of things that ohio state's kind of already top five in and and you you run you run out of things to kind of improve on so then they become a hyper focus so that's why he's talking about it like they they can take steps forward there yes i i don't know that they're consumed by it um but it's not the worst thing in the world to like really drill it in the guy's heads. Now, um, I think, in, in, like again, there's the, the balance part of it. Like, I think in a way that doesn't make them sort of unnecessarily gamblers, but uh, but in a way that when a team shows up to play Ohio State on Saturday, they know they better protect the ball because Ohio State's defense is going to come after it. And, and I think that's kind of what they're trying to get to. Now he did Jim Knowles go through a couple of stats that were on his mind, which was generating more sacks, getting more tackles for loss, uh, and impacting the quarterback more. Throughout his career, he has done that with a specific position. So I, since he brought those things up, I wanted to phrase this question the way, hey, you want to be multiple, you want blitz packages, you want to pressure the quarterback and get sacks. Is the Jack a solution for that? Yeah, like I've said, it's always there, but um, I don't think that right now with what we have that it's uh, it's the answer, you know. So it's it's uh, what I want to do is win, you know. And when you have uh, defensive line like like we do, um, you're not looking to take one of those guys off the field. I think we have players that could do it, you know, and I think it's a long season so we will keep that in our back pocket you know you never know with injuries and things that happen but um i think our our pressures and our aggressiveness you know needs to be uh, created out of that out of that four down look um you know in fact what here because of what we have if anything we we might uh we'll go the other way right like 
five, five of those, uh, rushmen on the field, you know, and, um, you know, particularly in passing situations. And then you have, uh, you know, you have ends here who can drop at times and do different, different things. You know, you just have to always balance. Okay. If I, if we drop a JT or a Jack, then what are we giving up by them rushing? You know, they, they, that's how they, that's how they help us the most. So, you know, I think, uh, while the Jack position will always be, uh, you know, available to us. I think here we have to just create more p pressures out of the four down look. I'll let anybody evaluate for themselves that response. I did not think that he was like thrilled to be making that concession personally. That yeah. is my opinion. That is my opinion. I, I don't think that that is truly how Jim Knowles feels that the Jack is just a back pocket option but if i'm wrong about that so be it i i think his preference would be that that it is not a, a back pocket option right i think that's clear um because i i do think there's some confusion because i've seen like people in the subtext or, or on the board at rival say like oh well the jack was just something he did because he was at a competitive disadvantage it's like no like that that's that may be what might have been part of it but like I, it's what he wants to do i think it would like i think he would like to have some multiplicity in his front um which the Jack affords you because it's just like a piece you move around the chessboard. You go from four, three to three, four rather seamlessly without having the substitute. Um, and they're not doing that now. And I think he'd like to do it more if he didn't, if, if, if he, he didn't want to do it at all, like they wouldn't have tried to do it his first year here. So I, it's a complicated conversation because like I, I am, I'm in agreement with anyone who thinks that like Larry Johnson as a defensive line coach should not have like an outsized influence on the structure of the defense as a whole. And it seems like he, he might, um, I, I also think that when Jim Knowles got here two years ago, two and a half years ago now, that there was probably some discussion of the roster changing to fit what Jim Knowles likes to do. It wasn't like he got here. It was more of a four down world. Eventually it was going to, you know, morph into more of a, a versatile front kind of world. But then like Jack and JT decide they want to come back. So what are you going to say? No, <laughs> like, of course you're not going to, of course you're not going to say no. So, so maybe they're, they're kind of stuck in this four down world. I don't, I don't want to say stuck. I feel like it's wrong. Like there are plenty of good defenses play four down fronts, um, but they are in this four down world. Maybe perhaps a little longer than they thought they would would be. I think you can see with some of their recruiting that they are anticipating getting away from that. Some um, I don't think they'll ever be a go from a pure four three or four two five to a pure three four. I just think Jim would like some versatility in, in the front. The thing that's frustrating is like they have the pieces to be both now, I think, and he said as much. So why not do it? There's just so much versatility on this roster. And I, again, they'll be a fine defense, but I, I, I will always wonder if the ceiling could be something greater than what it ends up being if they embrace some of that versatility a little more than it sounds like they're going to this fall. Yeah, this is the perfect example of of what i said at the start of the show there's 20 different paths this path is probably going to be more noticeable than any other i you can listen to the justification for that and like not really have a great counter argument yeah jt to Imolo and jack sawyer probably do need to be on the field in all these situations to rush the passer they could do this they have enough depth to put a fifth defensive end or defensive lineman on the field be there whether that's mitchell melton or caden curry or kenyana jackson you'd say well doesn't seem like doesn't seem like a bad idea to me. Those guys are very good. They can get off, uh, get to the passer and get off the edge and make things happen. And you can get the results you want that way. The part that I think has to be considered there is what that means for the back seven or the secondary specifically. If you're going to add to the front, the first person who's going to have to be impacted by this, from what I can tell, from what I understand, is Jordan Hancock. And I then you're having a different conversation. Who is more important in that scenario to creating the turnovers or allowing you to get different pressures? I don't, Jim Knowles and Larry Johnson are experts in their field. I would never assume that I know a better answer than they do. I definitely don't. But I, I feel like if you remove Caleb Downs from this conversation, I think that Jordan Hancock is the second most important person to Ohio State's defense. And a solution that involves taking him off the field 
could still be the best defense in the country doing it that way. Not saying that they they can't or won't or shouldn't or will or won't. I don't know. But I feel like their ceiling is highest with Jordan Hancock on the field. That's, that's again, my opinion of it. I mean, I, I, I am of the same opinion. I, I don't. I don't very much like entertaining the idea of taking Jordan Hancock off the field. It is a, it's not a problem. Like too many good players isn't a problem, but, but <laughs> it is a, it is a complicating factor when you have so many good players. Like there are a lot of guys you can say like, I don't want to take that guy off the field either. So like, what are you, what are you left to do? Right. But it's, it's on the staff to figure out what the best deployment for everybody is. And I think they have like, th- their plan is fine. I, there are definitely ways to get more aggressive and get more multiple and disguise things better. Um, out of their base defense um, in, in a way, though, I think will make an already very good defense tangibly better or already very good defense tangibly better in 2024. Um, I, I don't know. And maybe maybe it's just my personal preference. I, I, I don't I, I think I pick up on enough that like not every Ohio State fan feels maybe the same way that I do about embracing some of this versatility and getting a guy like CJ Hicks on the field with different roles and messing around with Sonny Styles a little bit or Arvell Reese like is an incredibly captivating talent that I would love to see on the field in some capacity this fall. I understand you can't kind of have everything. All you, all you can do is try to put out the best 11 and try to go win that, that game that week. And that's all that Jim Knowles is trying to do, but it's just, and I think maybe this would be less of a conversation if it, there didn't seem to be such a, a disconnect, frankly, between the defensive line coach and the coordinator in a way that seems to keep the coordinator from doing ideally what he would want to do. Um, I don't like that dynamic, but that's the dynamic that it seems like they're in right now. So they're just trying to make the best of it and we'll see what happens from there. But I, I, I guess there's, I take solace in the fact that the defense will still be good. Um, it's just a matter of, is it going to be as good as it possibly can be? We'll see. There's still a lot more uh, training camp to go for Ohio state. They're back on the practice field later today, Tuesday, uh, we will be in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center to shift back over to the offensive side. We are expecting to hear from new coordinator Chip Kelly and one, two, three, four, five quarterbacks. Don't know. <laughs> A quarterback or five quarterbacks. Uh, we'll wait and see. And then we'll have some coverage of you uh, for you coming from the Woody Hayes Athletic Center with some snap judgments. We'll break this down. We can do this with Chip Kelly on Wednesday or Thursday if you like it. Uh, let us know on the format. This is just the second time that we've tried it. So uh, if if you want more of that, we can definitely do that. If you want us to just go back to Bill and Berm and I talking back and forth without any of those voices in there, we can do that too. But we're just trying something new as we roll along through training camp and see what works, what doesn't. Let us know for more takeaways. These were the Tuesday version on the podcast daily. He's Bill. I'm Austin. So long.